It pains me to say this, guys, but we've fallen way harder for propaganda than the North Korean people under Kim Jong Il. He got me at the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. I ain't getting out this car. Look at, look at. Are you? You're recording me? So you probably know this Cheesecake Factory date video of this woman being invited to a date by a guy and they went to the Cheesecake Factory and she lost her marbles over that because she thought she was worth more? And if you're just like me, doom scrolling to oblivion on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, you've definitely seen this video and I don't need to elaborate any further. But when I saw it, I was like, damn, that's messed up. How can you treat someone like that on a date? And he was, you know, very nice to her. He was trying to talk to her about that and make his point clear. But what I didn't know, and what you probably didn't know, was that it's all fake. They've pulled out way better acting than a Darman video while simultaneously really being a Darman video. And as soon as they did a podcast together, I was already a little suspicious. I was like, hmm, that's a little weird to have two people, one of them who lost her marbles over going to a Cheesecake Factory day and a, and a guy who was willing to try to talk to her. They would never go on a podcast together to talk about their experience and reflect on it. My hunch was kind of right because when I try to show one of my friends the Cheesecake Factory date video, I stumbled upon a video that basically laid out all the evidence that it was fake. It seems that the podcast they were on was a red pill podcast led by a red pill guy who owns, who's got his own community, his own Facebook community. And if that's not enough, <laughs> they're actually actors. So what do we learn from this experience? Don't believe everything you see online, or at least not always. So the person that I watched the videos from, her name is Chrissy. And I was really interested by all the evidence she laid out because it, it made total sense. And at first I was like, all right, you know, Hmm. Until she showed that the woman in the video is an actress actively looking for gigs. What's even crazier is that she commented on Facebook that it was a skit. It was just put out there as if it was a real thing happening. They propagated rage bait to make the red pill people look valid for whatever they believe, which is kind of concerning. So what Chrissy laid out for us is that Kevin Wesley, the guy whose podcast they were on, seemed to be orchestrating it all. That group that the woman whose name there was Alicia, which isn't her real name, of course, which the nice guy gladly corrected Kevin Wesley from saying wrong. Now I'm going to ask Alicia as well, because during during this conversation, Alicia. Al Alicia. Alicia. Thank you. We'll get that right. But it turns out her name was Nikia Lowry. And not only that, she's active in those red pill spaces and a top contributor in the same group that Kevin Wesley owns, if I remember correctly. Not only did she admit to being an actress and the fact that this was a whole skit, she's actually a therapist. And I don't know how unhinged you must be as a therapist to knowingly participate in a skit that makes the red pill community looks valid, but she's also playing it off as some sort of human experiment. And what surprises me the most is that there are so many instances of this situation happening online that they could have gladly found something that really happened, but they decided to concoct some rage bait, outrage, red pill propaganda to get her 60 seconds of fame. And it worked. That's the craziest part. It works. She may be infamous, but attention is attention. And what's even crazier is that after this whole fiasco, they had to milk it in a 40 minute interview. And the fact that they're both actors performing a skit that they purposely didn't say that it was a skit puts a whole new perspective on it, mostly because the guy who was supposed to be the nice guy in all of this, trying to talk about his feelings and trying to talk over what happened. You want to talk about it? is not really a nice guy or he he might be a nice guy but for all we know he might not be because he's just an actor propagating rage bait skits to make red pill guys feel valid about themselves what also struck me as kind of weird is that kevin wesley called the guy <laughs> a giga chad and he's actually now like a giga chad in the uh, manosphere world, in the red pill community. The giga chad. But what's even crazier about the interview? She tried to talk in the interview as if she understood what happened, reflected on herself from the experience, this and that. And this whole skit with the interview, with her clarity of her changing her perspective after what happened, literally plays into this, this whole red pill trope of what guys in that space really want. And that's power, be it the power to change someone or the power to control a situation. I'll be honest, when I saw that that's what kind of tipped me off as soon as i saw that whole interview seeing christy's video really made me realize that damn my my suspicions were right because the insanity that this situation caused really reminded me how powerful propaganda really is and it really brings me back and reminds me of that one video with the girl who goes on a date or is like 14 15 
plates of clams and her date runs out because they were only going for some drinks from what i remember i think i saw that the the restaurant that they went to had a long ass line a couple days after that tiktok went viral it's very obvious why this video is bad not only this video itself in terms of the content mostly because it's fake but it really plays into red pill tropes and this is just the type of video that fresh and fit would show on camera or show on the screen and be like hey guys look at this haha -ha. and then they would just they, they call her stereotypical black woman name and then they interview those 12 instagram models and on their panel and using it as evidence that oh women are crazy they're playing right into their hands as i said before it's literally a darman video with better acting darman has some serious competition if the red pill space is producing such quality as this with better actors that they probably pay worse. <laughs> this woman's credibility as an actress may not ever recover from this. I, probably, well, everyone's gonna forget about this in a couple weeks. They just really wanted to create a gotcha moment and show it to an audience that is already biased about these situations and kind of tell them, like, see, women are terrible creatures. Then they're gonna shave their heads and take trend balone, you know? I don't know what these red pill guys do aside from harassing people online. It's kind of insane how they framed it, that they gave her an interview, made it look like she would redeem herself by understanding the situation and having a new perspective after what happened. This really is a prime example of why you should be critical of everything you see online. I'm not saying that a lot of things you see online are not real, but we're getting into some weird territory these days where it's easier to make proper propaganda yourself not knowing if it's propaganda or a commercial or an ad or whatever but using something like this to radicalize more people is insane i mean i'm kind of guilty of falling for propaganda too i'm still a human being i'm not perfect especially seeing this video really made me think even more about how real a video is and what the message may be if it's not a real video it really reminds me of when i talked about the taliban using memes on twitter trying to look relatable and it really brings me back to that moment about how they were able to outrage so many people and making making them all believe it was real but you know what Maybe the real Cheesecake Factory date wasn't the shared anger we all had towards that woman. Maybe it was all about the friends we made along the way. Thank you guys for watching. Peace.